Following are my first impressions after watching the Dragon uh, Dragonflight announcement stream. That's right. Dragonlands. The new World of Warcraft expansion. Okay. Actually, I think it was called Dragonflight. Hello, yeah, everybody. whatever. My name is Nixium, and today we're going to be it talking about is. World of Warcraft's newest expansion, Dragonflight. If Dragon you have not seen nuts. the cinematic for it, if you have not seen the like just the entirety of the announcements i'm going to be talking about them yeah. one by one in this video if you would like to see my full reaction live to all the announcements you can check that out over on the nixium highlights channel but this is a quick down and dirty synopsis of my thoughts on this expansion okay. and what blizzard is bringing to the table with the future of world of warcraft but first as always got to thank the sponsor get that out of the way real fast here we go. Today's video was sponsored by my storefront over on Amazon. If yep. you want to check out the gear that I use for YouTube, yep. for Twitch streaming. Yep. There we go. If you'd like to see some Isn't of the stuff that, crazy? that I recommend for new YouTubers or something. new Twitch streamers, click the link down in the description below. And that's it. Expectations versus reality. Now, before this expansion came out, there were a lot of leaks about what sponsored this expansion yeah. could be. We knew it was about dragons, and honestly, I've talked about this on my other mm -hmm. channel, but I was very excited for this, to keep it simple. Okay. In summary, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of going to other dimensions or breaking reality or any of that crap. I liked the idea of just going on an adventure and killing a dragon. So when the leaks were... I, I also think that alternate dimensions, it, it always ends up... It always ends up creating more questions than it solves. Coming out about dragon more lands or dragon solves. flight or dragon something. We didn't know what it was going to be called. Uh, this idea of a more down-to-earth Azerothian expansion really excited me. It kind of gave me a, a little bit of those classic WoW vibes. There was talk about yeah, class skins and some more classes being added to the game that all had a single spec. Things like tinkers, necromancers, minstrels, and this was honestly something I was very, very excited for. It seemed like they were really going back to the roots of World of Warcraft and what made the game exciting as a fantasy universe of just getting lost as an adventurer, fighting dragons, fighting monsters, climbing mountains, and uh, these leaks, you saw them, I saw them, I actually believed all of it. I actually got to the point yeah. where I was like, this is the next WoW expansion. Obviously it wasn't, it's the reality side of this point, but I was very... You know, excited might be a strong word, but I was uh, optimistic for yeah. this potential dragon expansion even before the announcement. But now uh, I was too. I mean, I was. It's like they said, oh, it's going to be an expansion about dragons. Cool. I like dragons. Huh. Nice. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. All right. Cool. Yeah. Officially know Sounds what good. is coming. World of Warcraft, Dragonflight, and let's talk about that, shall we? Let's talk about that in detail, in order. Okay. The Island of the Dragons. I'm so the glad first thing to talk Thanos, about when it comes to World of Warcraft, Dragonflight, is of course character. the Dragon Isles that have been revealed to us. Now, now I just want to get something out of the way. Let's just mm -hmm. get it out of the way. Yes. All right. You're right. You're 100% correct. It looks like how to train your dragon. All right. No one's denying that. Mists of Pandaria Who cares? looks like Kung Fu Panda. It did. This is how to train your dragon, okay? We know. You don't gotta comment it. Yeah. All right? The new zones look absolutely- I, I, I know before I even look at the comment section, the first comment is gonna be like, you know that cinematic? You know what that reminded me a lot of? How to train your dragon. Anybody else? Anybody else felt that way, huh? Was it just me? Absolutely gorgeous here on the Dragon Isles. You've got this volcanic area. Yeah. You've got the plains with the roaming centaur. You've got these ancient cities and yeah. stuff. And of course, you've even got a snow zone slash big redwood forest zone inspired by Grizzly Hills. Yeah, now, cool. I love Grizzly Hills from Everybody Wrath of the does. Lich King. I do. Fantastic. It was lit. So seeing this just was like, oh, like it looked incredible. The snow, the trees, all of it. Yeah. And the best part, the best part, you know it. You thought my, you thought about my name when you saw him pop up in this expansion. The Tuscar. The oh, Tuscar are God. officially back in World of Warcraft. After all these years, we're finally getting to see a continuation of the glory. 
that is the Tuscar. Tuscar. I think that's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Like It's cool. I hope they add it in. I always thought they were going to add in Tuscar as an allied race. I do. I think they should be a new allied race, man. Who cares about Tuscar? I think they're great. Yeah, they're amazing. You know what I really want to see, though? I want to see ogres. Like, add ogres into the game. Females, Tuscar, Next, children. Subs, Incredible. I love it. I want... I love the Tuscar, okay? Cheshkalashka, bitch. In okay. conclusion, the new zones look very pretty. And I like Tuscar. Yes. Cool. A new race, a new class. This one is uh, slightly disappointing for me. I have to admit this new dragon race and class combo. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, first and foremost, again, I was expecting the class skins and like, you know, the single spec classes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so just seeing, hey, we got this new race and this single new class that only the new race can be it was slightly disappointing for me. It wasn't like a tragedy. I feel that I, I think a lot of people felt that way is like they wanted to have like their human character that they played a long time, like, you know, have a character that looks like, you know, this new spec. I, I think that's that's the way a lot of people felt. I'm uh, like I, I support the decision. I think it's uh, as I said, you know, I said this before with um, uh, what do you call it with with like just the expansion in general. I I'm I support the idea of taking big risks, take make ballsy decisions, take big risks, or anything. It was just like oh man, I was hoping for Let's that tinker. I was All hoping right. for that that minstrel class. You know what I mean? Like. I thought that would have been cool, but we have this new playable race called yeah. the Drakthir, and every single customization of these guys that Blizzard has shown so far, these guys- Dog ass motherfucking shit. Like, this guy looks like he's trying to, like, fucking pick up underage girls. This guy looks pretty cool, to be fair. This guy uh, looks, I, I don't even know what, it looks like he wears high heels. Like, this guy right here looks like he has a, I, I don't know, like, he has, like, a, a fucking EDM band. Like, it's just weird, man. I, I hate all of these. I think they're dumb. I'm not about it. Yeah, this guy, yeah, you're, you're right. This guy looks like if a fucking Scaly drew fan art of XQC. No, yeah, sure. Yep, there we go. Th yep, there we, there we are. Look like wow. they belong at a My Chemical Romance concert. All right, you know it. And I know it, Everybody and no one's saying it. it, so I'm going to say it, all right? Yeah. These guys look like they belong at some weird-ass, like, punk rock concert or some yeah. shit. But damn it, they're, they're dragons, all right? And they can breathe fire and shit and do time things and grow big-ass, like, green flowers to heal people. And that's cool. Yeah. You know what else is cool, though, for me? I, I, like, I'm an old-school Warcraft lore nerd, and I love that this new race and this new class is just rooted in that OG World of Warcraft lore. You had Deathwing. He was trying yeah, to create yeah. this hybrid dragon... Well, not class, but this hybrid dragon race thing, and he succeeded in doing it, and that is what we are playing as. So it's like you got that old Warcraft lore kind of coming back there with Deathwing and all this stuff that happened so long ago that honestly I didn't think Blizzard was going to explore it anymore so seeing them actually no, explore this too. is pretty cool and I'm excited to see what the starting zone is like explaining you know how like, this happened how were yeah. you born and where did you come from and where what's your goal what's your purpose I think it's awesome personally for me I don't see myself playing this that. class or this race very much just because like I am the personality right like, you might like the idea of playing a dragon, but you see, I just want to kill a dragon, yes, right? Like, yes, I am a direct that's right. descendant of Beowulf, as you all know, so I just want to kill dragons. Like, that's what I'm all about. Dragon flying, where you get your- I agree with that. Like, I'll probably try out the new class, etc., but, like, I've always been- Like, I like having characters that I can view as, like, my- This is, like, me in this world, right? Uh, like self-insert characters basically that's why you know like it's the meme right fucking human male white uh you know average you know to muscular build uh knight class long sword and shield all right guys let's go yep there it is let's do it and, and that's what i do every time and i do it with every class every game and it, it's it's fun every time
own customizable dragon and hopefully you can name your dragon and if they do allow us to name our dragon which of course i would assume they're going to allow us nuts. to do that every dragon is going to be named toothless i'm calling it right now it's going to happen you, you know dragon it's going to happen it's gonna, every dragon's going to be called that's toothless, what it's really right? going to be mm -hmm. like let's be honest in dragon flying uh, essentially what this system is is you learn how to fly a dragon now i do yeah. have to say one thing this don't make no freaking sense. All right, let's just get it out of the way. This don't make no sense. I've been flying around on dragons for years in this game, but apparently my character got hit in the head with a rock or something, and he forgot how to fly a dragon. So I think it's more that you teach the dragon how to fly. That's what I'm. My, that this was my expectation around it is that you teach the dragon how to like how to fly, and you know, like over time you uh oh you after your training with the dragon it becomes able to do more tricks and more things we teach the dragon yeah i i think so it's kind of like how to train your dragon apparently when you get to the dragon isles you need to like teach your dragon how to flap its wings properly how to soar how to dive yeah. how to barrel roll and all this stuff now, what is the point of all of this system? Like, like, what are you supposed to do with this system once your dragon is fully trained and he can mm -hmm. do like spins and stuff? I yeah. haven't got a clue. It, it just seems like they're making flying mounts more interesting or just flying with your dragon more interesting. Cool. I, I don't think you're going to be doing barrel rolls on your gyrocopter or your big red rocket or anything. I hope they add you know, in the content system for this. reminds me a lot, though, it, it, of Mists of Pandaria cool with the daily quests where you yeah. had to raise your dragon. You know what I'm talking about. Yep, yep, um, yep. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to add some crazy Jane end Forest. game progression to it, but having a dragon that you can customize and teach to fly and feel like that guy from Avatar or whatever, I don't... I think that they should have a boss fight in the game where you use the dragons and you fight the boss on the dragons. I think that would be really cool. That would be fucking badass. Yeah, absolutely. And before people went, Whoa! But what? But what? Mal go? It was not a good. What? Fuck, man! Oh, come on, man! Yeah, I thought Flame Leviathan was really fun. I did. I thought Flame Leviathan was a really cool boss. I, I, I did. Um, on top of that, look at, uh, look at Elden Ring. Elden Ring has mounted combat with bosses, and it's fucking awesome. It's not like this is impossible. Blizzard just did it wrong. Remember his name? Uh, it's, it's neat updated talent trees like i'm just gonna establish something real fast okay uh, i've never personally met someone that likes the mists of pandaria talent system that was brought to the game over the original talent system uh, people that actually you know played extensively with both th they tend to always say they prefer the classic talents and it's not surprising because it allows you to really customize your character. You can make these weird hybrid builds and stuff. Blizzard yeah, I, I, I used to like being able to do different crazy stuff. And, like, it's not really that much of the case anymore. Like, yeah, I, I wish that was much more m much more the way it worked. They're bullshit, to be honest. I think they should have them both, if you want my honest opinion. I think they should have the Mr. Pandaria talents and they should have the other talents. But maybe that's just too much customization. Talked about that in the announcement. And it really allowed you just to customize your character however you wanted. Now, Blizzard removed this back in Mists of Pandaria, and they say, like, uh, yeah, we wanted to do some BS, like, make your character... Like, I don't even remember what their reasoning was for it. Well, but the, real the, the reasoning they had was good. They actually did have good reasoning for it. They said everybody's playing the same spec, and it, there's no type of like differences between the specs. So we're going to add in this new thing and you're going to have different choices that you can use for different situations. And I'm like, okay, I remember when this happened. I'm like, all right, yeah, this sucks, but all right, let's try it out. And you know what I think happened? I think it worked at the beginning and then it just got worse. Whereas like now everybody plays the exact same talents. Like it, you guys, am I the only person who like, if I look at my talent tree, there's like five dead talents in there that nobody, that I never use for any circumstance ever. That's awful. The, the problem really isn't with the talent system. It's, I'm glad they're doing the new one. I think the new one's better, by the way. I like the new one more. However, but the problem with the Mr. Pandaria version wasn't that like the talent system was bad. It was that you didn't ever change them. Like, there were so many of these, like, uh, 
I, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, some of them for Warriors. Like, some of, like, the Fury ones were just completely wasted, man. The reason why they removed it is I can only imagine how difficult and challenging it must have been to balance all of those talent trees back in the day when it came to raiding and PvP and all that stuff. I, I, I can only imagine. And so they took the talent system and they heavily simplified it. Yeah, well, they did. People for years have been saying they really would like the old talent system back. And I mean, obviously, Classic WoW has been a huge success for Blizzard. We'll talk about that in another video, by the way, the classic Wrath of the Lich King stuff. Yeah. Um. So essentially, Blizzard is bringing back the classic WoW talent trees in a way, but they're making them even more complex because now you have a class talent tree, like a and druid, a spec one at the and same then you time. also have a spec talent tree. So you can customize your default druid, and then you have your specs over here, and you can spec out your feral <laughs> druid, the feral druid, however you want so it's like they took the they brought back the og co talent trees and they made them more complicated so i do worry about the balancing and the workload that blizzard is about to take on with this i mean i don't i think they can do it the reason why is that you're actually having less things to balance overall because they're removing all of the balance borrowed power and they're putting it all into the talent trees you see what i'm saying so, like, whenever you really take it and you add in all of the borrowed power systems and you put them together and you compare them to the talent trees, the talent trees are, like, this big, whereas the borrowed power is, like, this big. So, I, I think they'll be able to... I mean, like, they're, I mean, like we know they're not going to really balance it, right? Like, I mean, yeah, we know that's not really going to happen. But, like, it's possible to do. This system looks amazing. Like, I'm like, dude, th this is awesome. But... Man, I mean, Blizzard, it almost looks like you guys are shooting yourselves in the foot with this. But I, I guess time will tell. I mean, we'll yeah. see. But this looks, I mean, it looks great. The updated talents, at least I think so. Updated professions. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, this is the thing that excites me the most about this expansion. I have made so many videos talking about updating professions. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to go into my whole rant, but I hate how irrelevant professions are, especially if you're a low-level character in this game. I feel like professions were only relevant in Vanilla and Burning Crusade. And in every other expansion, they were made irrelevant as soon as the first raid tier was not that hard to do. In Wrath? Wrath, you had, like, okay, so there were the class bonuses that you got, right? With, like, the rocket gloves, etc., and, like, the different, like, trinkets and shit. Yeah, sure, like, you could say Wrath, but, like, almost all of that stuff was gone after Nax. Like, w whenever you were in ICC, that didn't matter. Like, you, you, the only thing that mattered is, like, there were patterns in ICC you could buy, right? I think it was, like, a, a belt or, like, a, I, I don't remember what it was the, that you could buy, too. That was it. Right now. I've talked before about, hey, yep. why That's don't right. you make it so that low-level players can create sets of gear? Like, right at level 10 or something. That, like, gives them, like, additional little powers or something that makes the leveling more fun and engaging. That's actually a really good point, and I hope that happens. Because I think one of the big issues with leveling right now is the fact that, like, whenever, if they make leveling gear, they should make it to where gear scales. And it's better than heirloom gear. Because I think that's the problem, is, like, it needs to be better than heirloom gear in order for people to want to do it. But there's another problem, is that you don't need good gear to level up. Like, what's going to be the difference? Like, saving 10 minutes? Why would you want to spend an hour or two hours leveling up your profession so you can save 10 minutes while leveling? So I, I don't know how they can make this relevant while leveling at all. And if, hey, if Blizzard, if you've got this big boner of, like, getting people to level cap as fast as possible, why not make it something like, oh, hey, you got three of the five pieces of the flimsy chainmail set. Okay, yeah. well, now you have 5% increased experience from like all sources or something and this is like a set that like a level 10 guy could create uh potions it's like okay at low level you can drink a potion and it makes you run really fast or something just i feel like content for leveling players is dead and i don't know if it will ever come back in any real sense of of the term i feel like just 
like the game should just start basically at max level. Like that's just the way the game is. Leveling is the tutorial. And it, it's weird because like leveling was like such a big deal in Classic WoW and people tried every single thing possible to avoid having to do it. Speed up the leveling process, right? Like if that's your goal to like get them through that as fast as possible, yeah. why not do something like that, right? Or maybe just make it like each piece of gear gives like 1% more increased xp i don't know but right now the point is is that crafted gear and professions at low level are completely useless and they, so i've been talking be. about a profession overhaul for forever on this channel and they're finally bringing us a profession overhaul now i can't speak for a new player coming into this game. what i would say if you want to make them relevant make them to where max level players can create them and sell them to low level players that you can buy in the auction house for relatively a cheap price like, and have the items scale with your level. Like, that, I think, is the only way, if you want to make this actually work. Like, it, it's just, yeah, no listing cost, like that. Yeah, a cheap price, got no chance. I don't know. Heirloom gear, make it better than heirloom gear. Game, because they didn't really talk about the low-level profession stuff with this announcement. But the stuff that they did yeah, talk maybe, about. Like, I don't think like it's going to happen. this whole system of putting out, like, requests for gear and, like, being able to, like, you know, pay people commissions and stuff and whatnot, even making them guild specific, all this Can you stuff pay they exposure? talked about with profession changes, I think, I, I mean, I think it looks incredible. I love crafting in MMORPGs. It's my favorite part of an MMORPG, aside from leveling. Yes, I'm an altaholic. It's, it's what I do. And so seeing them giving love to professions after all these years, like, all this stuff i highly encourage you to look into it uh, maybe i'll make a deep dive video at some point but the profession changes that they are bringing with this expansion look incredible Updated. i am concerned the only thing i'm concerned about with the profession changes is that max level end game progression will be built around rolling quality options where it's like, oh, you have a quality and the quality increases the stats and item level on the gear. So you have to roll a quality of like 95 or above in order for it to get the highest threshold of, uh, of eye level. That's what I'm worried about because that's the way it happened in New World. And this system is kind of derivative of what New World does. So I, I don't know, guys. UI. Uh, there's really nothing to say about the updated UI. I wasn't even going to include this in the video. Uh, every single MMO in the so world Star has, yeah, yeah, like, Star customizable at UI game. at this point. So Blizzard putting this in, it's like, okay, cool. You yeah, caught obviously. up with everybody else. Good. Congratulations. In conclusion, I admit I was expecting a bit more out of this expansion just because of the leaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. But overall, the expansion seems harmless. I, I think in my big highlights video on the yeah. other channel, um, it, when I was watching this live on Twitch, I said something. I feel like one thing is that like Shadowlands released and announced, it came with like glaring problems. Like massive, glaring, huge problems. Like covenants, conduits, all of this stuff. This expansion is not announcing with those same glaring problems. Yet. To the effect of, this expansion really doesn't have that gut punch to it. It doesn't have that, like, wow, like, factor. Like, this is no, it amazing. Doesn't. This is so cool. I'm so excited to play this. It was a safe approach. At least approach. not for me. I mean, you guys might be like, dude, I could play as a Drac Theor. You might be losing your minds over that. But the thing is, is that what this expansion does have... It has a Azeroth-focused expansion. It's rooted in OG Warcraft lore with the dragon flights and stuff. Um, dragon flying and stuff, the profession updates. It, it seems like what they're doing is they're really playing it safe with yes. this expansion. Yes. And focusing on what And, and you can tell that even more with the fact that they haven't announced pre-orders for the game. Like, I feel like that's a really big deal. Like, the thing is, like, as soon as Shadowlands got announced, they're like, okay, all right, put the money in the box. Put the money in the box. Come on. Let's go. And, and like, that is an actual huge difference, man. It's a PR expansion. Good. Good. Oh, wow. They're doing it for PR. They're making the game good for PR. It's like, oh, man. Damn it, man. They're making the game good for us just because they want us to like it again? Bro, like, what's this PR pandering shit? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, yeah, finally. Yeah, I, I, yeah there's no pleasing people. Exactly. Damn.
works rather than what does not work. And uh, I kind of like yeah, that. I like that they're like that. not introducing some crazy new system that's going to completely break yeah. the game. And I mean, but we'll see. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said the exact same thing for Shadowlands, and Shadowlands ended up being ridiculous, to say the least. I'm Shadowlands was fine on release. The problem, oh, not besides Covenants, right? The systems were bad. But besides that, like, the content was okay. Like, PvP was really fun. Like, how many of you guys had fun with Shadowlands on release? Am I the only person? I had a lot of fun. It was great. PvP was awesome. Uh, the raid was interesting. Like, yeah, it was, it was good, man. The problem was that there was no content. If Shadowlands had the amount of content that BFA did, I think people would have been fine. Like, yeah, they would have complained about it, and it, would have, it still would have been the worst expansion ever, because every current law expansion is the worst expansion ever. Uh, Legion was the worst expansion ever, uh, e even uh, back then, right? A lot of people thought that. There's ne Every law expansion is the worst one that we've ever had. A and then, so this is the way it works, right? Um, the current expansion is bad. The expansion before it was also bad, and the expansion before that expansion was good. That's the way it works. It doesn't matter which three it works with. That's always the way that people see it. Open for better storytelling with this expansion. I'm hoping to see Galakrond potentially, that big, you know, dragon man. I think that was his name, Galakrond. Yeah. Um, I'm open to learn more about the dragons. Honestly, I'm hoping just to see the dragons, or I'm excited. Okay, clip it, clip it. In, uh, by the time that this expansion is out, people will reminisce on the fun that they had in BFA with Corruptions. They're already doing it now. They will reminisce on how cool Mechagon was. Clip it right now. Uh, I want to see it. Following that logic, uh, uh, what's this here? Vanilla is Biss, right? Uh, that's what they think, yeah. A lot of people feel that way. Exactly. In Wrath, people were like, man, bro, like, BC was okay, but you know what was really good? Classic WoW. And now, in BFA, how many people think about it? How many people were thinking, you know what actually was a great expansion? WAD. Remember that big argument that we had if WAD was worse than BFA, and I insisted that WAD was worse and nobody agreed? I'm telling you guys, this is how they think. J-Mac, thank you for the five good subs. I appreciate that. I did just to see the dragons being relevant again. Because in classic WoW and in old school World of Warcraft, the dragons were like these demigods that were like yeah. guardians of the world. And they've just been irrelevant since Cataclysm. It's like, oh, yeah, thanks. You helped us they beat Deathwing. They retired. So, all right, you guys can go away now. Now we're the guardians of Azeroth. Like, forget you guys. And yeah, so I'm, I'm excited here, to bitch. see them being relevant again. Those are my quick thoughts. Uh, uh, my first impressions on the expansion. Um, I'm recording this video the same day that they did the announcement, so forgive it. The forgive the video if it's a little quick and dirty. Um, thank you all for watching, though. Please subscribe. Please hit the okay. like button. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Are you excited for it? Are you, are you done? Are you just gonna play Final Fantasy, Star Wars: Old Republic? What are your thoughts? And I will see you all with my next project. That's right. I love you. Oh. Vishnu a law weary traveler. God, I forgot all about that one. Oh my god. All right, all right. Let me link the video for you guys. Let me link the video. Uh, and, and we'll see what people have to say about it. Now, I know there are perspectives on the other side. There was a quasi video where he was talking about how much he was not a fan of, uh, of the new expansion. So I'm going to watch that too and, and see what he has to say. Because I think it's kind of interesting to see the uh, the different perspectives. Somebody said there's a new Act Man video as well. I don't really know. Uh, let's see if I can find it. And let's see here. It looks like there's not. Now, I, I know that there was like some drama that the guy had with, uh, you know, that other uh, quantum guy, whatever the fuck his name was. So I don't know, Quasi. Yeah, we'll watch it. I think it'll be good. Like, yep, yeah, we're, we're going to see it. We're going to see them all. Let me read a few of the comments. Nixium's made content for years. Give him a sub if you like the content. He's always been funny. We've watched him for uh, a very, very long time. I like him a lot. And uh, let's look at the other ones. New Divian for her video on Lost Ark. We watched it just a little bit ago, okay? Uh, really going to wait and see. They made promising announcements before, but they keep messing up. I honestly have no confidence in the devs to make this good, so I'll just wait until we can see some actual gameplay. Certainly no pre-order. I think that's fair. I, I, I think that's totally fair. The thing is, people have been fucked in the ass by Blizzard before, 
and they're not happy about it because they don't want to get fucked in the ass again. That's it. Yeah, they don't want to do it. And I'll not pre-order. Yeah, the thing is, like, I'll be honest. I will pre-order the game, but that's because it's my job. Like, it's my job. I don't want to have to fucking download it on, on release day and, and all that shit, right? If I, if I was not doing that, I'd probably not pre-order it either. Uh, I, I feel like pre-ordering a game should have died in 2012. There's no reason that you have to pre-order a game now. Like, I, I, it, it, there's no reason. And you can make the argument, it is true, that it gives you a head count for server capacity. That is true. However, I think it would be better if there were just simply no fucking pre-orders. Uh, yeah, I would prefer to not have it, although as a content creator, of course, I will do it because it's easier for me. So let's see here. I'm going to buy it anyways. Uh, $60 an hour later doesn't matter. Yeah, I think there's that's that's how I look at it too. Of course I'm going to buy it and play it, right? It, it, it's my job, right? Of course. Uh, let, let's see here. Dragon Race looks like it's something I'd see in Guild Wars 2. The dragon uh, flying look like Griffin in Guild Wars 2. Is that a bad thing? No. I wish the Griffin and Roller Beetle were in the other games. Exactly. Uh, this gives me the same feeling Mop gave me whenever it was first announced, which is cautious optimism. I was not happy about Mr. Pandaria whenever it announced. Uh, I did not like it at all. Uh, I honestly do like the idea. Uh, it gets me right back into the mood of leveling. Uh, I'm hopeful the direction Blizzard's going in. Saw interviews with Ian and seemed like real conversations. There seems to be a real change possible for the first time in a long time. Uh, I also, I, uh, I'm going to say uh, there's a chance that I might get an interview. I'm not sure if this is going to happen. I'm not sure if this is going to happen, right? It's probably like, you know, we'll see what happens, right? But there is a good chance that I'm going to get an interview and, and we're going to do it on all craft. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, now what? Yeah, Jesus to Jesus, thanks for five subs. Yeah, so I'll probably do a thing where people can uh, submit some questions they want to ask and I'll pick some of the better ones. I, I've actually already wrote out a lot of my questions that I, that I have. And uh, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, don't fucking lie. Yeah, that'd be awesome, right? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I mean, the thing is, like, uh, I think the kind of questions I want to ask are like, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them know like some of the things that I think are wrong with the game, like for sure. But like, I mainly want to know like how there's how they think about the game, right? Like definitely how like yeah, first thing I, I honestly hope that if I do an interview with Ian, I'm like, so what about the sword and silithus? And he just goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Next question, you know, and that's it. Just pretends like yeah, I don't know what this is or or whatever. Don't want to dodge questions. Uh, I think that a lot of times they, um, that the thing is, like, I don't really know. Like, there's a fine line between, like, dodging a question and somebody just simply not having the answer or, or not really knowing. Uh, I think that the best answer in a lot of cases is, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see, we're going to put it out there, see how players like it. And if they like it, we're going to do it more. If they don't, we're not going to do it. You know, I think that's a smart way to approach it rather than trying to go into it with an investment in mind, right? Like, you're, you're, uh, yeah, like you're, you have an investment in it, typically scripted. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll probably submit the questions, etc. But they do that just so they can know which ones to answer. Like, yeah, I, I feel like it's not it, it's not the same thing. Like, whenever we had the Yoshi P interview, he just said, like, straight up, he's like, yeah, but just come on, we'll talk about whatever the fuck. We just want to talk about gaming, we'll do that. Like, he, he didn't care. But I, I think that Blizzard is, like, much more formulaic with it. And, uh, yeah, I, I like the way Square Enix did it a lot, by the way. I thought it was amazing. And uh, what's this here? You guys are great on that one? Yeah, I think I think we'll do good on this one too. Absolutely. Uh, Goblin should break down and store the, steal the sword for metal. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, and nobody ever goes to Silithus, so nobody would even notice. It's just like, it, like every patch is just gone. And then like whenever people bring up part of the sword is gone, Blizzard's like, well, you know, like it is what it is. You know, I don't know. It's just, you know, I have no idea. Right? It is what it is. And so, yeah, load the sword and the cannon. Yeah, that's even better. Okay, so let's see his uh, his reaction, okay? Uh,